everyone. Welcome to another edition of On The Beat. Uh, I'm Tony Alvaro here with my fellow beat writers Andrew John and Brett Logirado previewing the Cincinnati game for SU coming up Saturday at noon. Uh, I'll be there in Cincinnati, but before we get to it, obviously, there's some things to touch on. Number one, uh, SU obviously needs to be concerned about will Zach Kolaris be playing this weekend. The most recent news out of Cincinnati is that he's questionable. Uh, the pra Wednesday practice is a little, little bit more encouraging than Tuesday, but uh, it's still up in the air. Um, if you ask us, I think we're leaning towards uh, seeing Chaz Anderson out there Saturday, but um, what are the ramifications if Anderson's in there? What are the ramifications if Claris is in there? What do, you, what do you think, Brett? Well, if Claris is in there, you know, SU has to deal with probably the you know most high-powered offense in the Big East. Um, it's a totally different animal when he's in there. Um, I don't think he's going to play just from being on crutches sometime during the week. It seems really fishy that he's going to play. That he's not going to play. So. Um, you know, but if he if he does play, you know, it's it's a high powered offensive attack, like I said. Yeah, and I think that uh, you know I too don't think that he will play. But with uh, the way Chaz Anderson played against USF, uh, the offense uh, definitely was quite a bit different with him in there. He doesn't have that ability to to run that Claris has, and uh, I don't think he's quite an efficient enough passer to really give this defense um, a lot of problems. So. Uh, I do think that, you know, the, the defense obviously needs to come and, and play the way it did against West Virginia, regardless of who's that quarterback, but uh, obviously Zach Claris is much more dangerous. Yeah, and I mean, that's a good point, bringing up West Virginia. They have played against USF, they have played against the Mountaineers, two teams that aren't quite at Cincy's level when they have Claris, but two teams that can put out, I guess, you know, just total offensive output that is comparable or similar, especially West Virginia. Um, you know, they're going to be playing a similar team that attacks them in the same kind of way. So I think that will benefit SU this weekend, whereas if they were coming off against playing kind of a, a team in the Big East that had a little bit of a different kind of technique in, in what they do. So whether it be Anderson, whether it be Claris, I do think SU has the upper hand uh, just in that matchup there, obviously only allowing 14 points to WU last weekend and 9 to USF. Um, I mean, is, the, is there a point total you guys think mm -hmm. that, that SU needs to, to keep them below um, or that because they're going to get to a point total there for themselves on offense. I mean, just what is your take on, I guess, um, what SU needs to do this with that? Well, if Claris does play and it becomes a shootout, it, you know, there start to, you know, questions start to develop whether SU can hang hang tough in a shootout. You know, since he's defense is just, you know, probably as low powered as its offense is high powered. Um, USF scored 38 points against it last weekend. Um, after scoring nine against Syracuse, but you know I don't. After Ryan Nassib's performance last week at five of fifteen, you know there there has to be questions whether a running team can stay in a, a, in a shootout like that. So yeah, you know I think that uh, you know as Brett, Brett mentioned the 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 defense of Cincinnati is just is just terrible, and uh, I think that that will give Syracuse the opportunities that we haven't seen in uh, you know uh, quite a few weeks now. I think um, last time we saw Syracuse actually have a pretty good offensive game was against Colgate. It's obviously a much different team than Cincinnati, but I think that um, if if the you know they're able to have some favorable matchups in that against that defense, I think that the offense can go off. Yeah, and just you know, with regards to just qu players who I guess are questionable coming off injuries. Obviously, everyone's saying DeLon Carter is going to be out there Saturday. He will be out there Saturday, but there is just I guess that little question mark there. What exactly he will be able to bring to the table? Um, mm -hmm. Delon was saying that he even could have gone back into the game there on Saturday um, against uh, the Mountaineers, but um, he decided to, to obviously uh, not play. But you know, it'll still remain to be seen um, if he is at all banged up, and that'll kind of I guess affect this offense. But I think we all agree that this SU offense sh shouldn't have a problem at all against this uh, Cincy D, and um, you know mm -hmm. that's going to be I it's, it's just not going to be an issue for them. So I guess just to go into the predictions. Um, we're all picking SU over Cincy uh, by about the same margin, with about with similar scores. What's your take, Andrew? Um, I think that you know I predicted thirty-one to twenty. Uh, I do. I, I picked that. You know, the, the twenty I gave Cincinnati based on the fact that we don't know if Calaris is playing. I think that they could definitely score more if, if he is playing, but I think that they could score significantly less mm -hmm. if Chaz Anderson's uh, you know running the offense there. So I, I, I'm comfortable with picking them at twenty and. And I think that because of the, the weakness of Cincinnati's defense, I think Syracuse can probably get up to 25 or 30. I'm picking a similar score. I'm picking Syracuse 31, Cincy 23. Um, also, you know, the 23 points do have, you know, it's, it's based on whether Caleros plays or not. 
Um, you know, like like I said before, there are questions. You know, if if this if Claris does play and this becomes a shootout, whether SU can can hang in there. But uh, I think ultimately, even if even if Claris does play, that SU should should walk away with this um, game with a win. And uh, I think you know if they do that, they'll kind of you know cement themselves at the top. You know, the upper tier of the Big East. You know, the top two or three teams. Um, and, and they'll be on their way to, uh, you know, a, a major bowl, I guess. Yeah, or, I mean, just I think overall the point that needs to be made is that SU is a better team than, than since yeah. is right now. Overall, I mean, right. and I think, you know, you know, thing, some, one thing we haven't touched on is the O-line. The O-line mm-hmm. puts up a performance like they did against WVU last weekend, controlling the game like they did, albeit with uh, kind of a different, kind of bigger formation. Um, what is Cincy going to do to kind of stop that? I don't see it happening. I see SU scoring over 30 points. My prediction is SU 33, uh, Cincy 24. That offense has some weapons, and, and even if Chaz Ass is in there, they're going to score, I think, um, more points than WVU did last week. Um, obviously, you're coming down from somewhat of a high there um, with, with beating WVU like that. So, um, just overall, SU 33, Cincy 24. Um, I don't think throughout the game it's going to feel that close, um, 11 uh, or 9 points, but. Um, it should be a solid win for SU and just moving forward. I think they're at the point where they're going to continue to put out uh, similar performances from here on out. And then I think the last thing we need to touch on is that they do win 3-1 and one through this four-game stretch. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Doug Marone, I, I think, couldn't have been happier with that. And it really shows the maturation of the program uh, under his direction overall, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's it for now. Um, I'll be fi- flying solo to Cincinnati tomorrow down there for the noon game Saturday. Be sure to check back uh, on Saturday for full coverage from the game live tweets. Uh, we'll make sure you have a, a game story for you up there as the game is ending. And of course, in Monday's uh, edition of the Daily Orange, full um, just coverage uh, from Cincy. Again, we'll be there. Um, we're looking forward to bringing it to you guys. Uh, once again, signing off from 744. Thanks, guys.